Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Steve Zamek of PDF Solutions and Eli Roth of Teradyne. I'm going to talk today about putting the pieces together on adaptive test. Steve, how do the pieces go together in adaptive test? So today, we have a lot of deployments in the field with uh, over 100 customers and uh, more than 10,000 testers where we are deployed. The deployment today uses an agent that is deployed onto the tester and the problem with that is that in OSETs, for example, you can have multiple companies, multiple parties putting their agents on the tester. What does an agent do? The agent has two primary purposes. One is to collect the data from the test and send it over to the cloud, to the cloud side. The other job of, job of the agent is to take the outputs and uh, control something in the test. And so really what you're doing is, is really collecting a lot of this data and utilizing it in a way that you haven't done in the past, right? Correct. What's the problem with current architecture? There are two main issues. One issue is that the agents that we are deploying on the test computer, they are competing over the same resources that are used by the tester to orchestrate the operation. That's one. The second one is in a typical deployment, you may have multiple different customers using the same tester in different periods of time, which means that there needs to be multiple agents or multiple solutions deployed onto the same test, tester. Historically, where has the agent been used and is that changing? Absolutely. So far, all the agents in our production deployments have been deployed here on the tester. And in the future, we are working together on the joint architecture with Teradyne to deploy those agents on the Ultra Edge, which is the edge compute next to the tester. And Ultra Edge meaning, what's the difference there versus Edge? So this is really the best of both worlds. You get beefy computer next to your tester, which allows you to run some large models and do a lot of complicated inferencing. But at the same time, you are actually not consuming any resources of the tester, which allows you to run a lot more complicated things without any, any penalty. Historically, these have been very large models that you had to wrestle with, which obviously is why it's on the cloud. What's changed? What's changed is really the size of the models, the complexity of the chips, uh, like we discussed before, and the need for a lot more efficient operation. That's one. The other thing that changed is there are a lot more data sources coming from all different steps of semiconductor manufacturing that people sometimes want to use as the input into the model. This is sort of following the same trend that we're seeing in other parts of computing, which is that in the past, almost everything that was machine learning ran on a, a giant uh, cloud uh, operation, but it's moving increasingly out to the edge where you can do much more because you've got uh, inferencing algorithms from scratch. Correct. And there are two layers to that solution. One layer is the inference of how you run the model, and that's basically split between the cloud and the ultra edge box. The other layer is how you build those models and how, where you do the processing. And that layer is split now in terms of your IT cloud between on-prem server and uh, the cloud. So the other part of the solution is how you partition the services and the data between the cloud and the server on-prem. And this is what we are looking at here. So the tester floor will typically have an on-prem server that will have some partition in each one of those areas, whether it's data, services, rules, or AI ML model, a certain partition between the on-prem server and the things that we do in the cloud. Your data management here becomes very complicated. How do you control that? And that's exactly where our experience comes in. Uh, so we've been in this industry for 30 years, and we have a lot of deployments, whether it's IDMs, foundries, OSETs, or fabulous companies. And uh, historically, we've been collecting all the data from all the different data sources across the semiconductor manufacturing chain and aligning it. What's the most important thing is to align all this data in a uniform data model that is built specifically for the semiconductor industry. So you've got all that data and you've got it all modeled correctly. Does it always get used correctly? That's a really good point. And we all know that it doesn't. But the beauty of those deployments is that because of the nature of uh, the data persisting in the cloud, it actually allows a lot more visibility today than you used to have in the past. So whether you are a test engineer or a product manager or on the OSET manufacturing floor, our deployments allow you to have 
access, it basically de democratizes the data and it allows full visibility, breaking data silos and allowing people to work jointly together on the same sets of data. Basically what you've done here, which is interesting, is you've compensated for the complexity of these devices and the inability to get into test these very easily with other data that says we can get in there from a different side. You basically reverse the whole picture, right? Exactly. And I think one thing that is not explained here in this diagram is all the data sources and where we are pulling the data from. But with our deployments, the customers have full flexibility of what data from any step during the manufacturing process can be used as an input into those complex models that we are deploying onto the edge boxes. Eli, why are you heading down the, the road of adaptive test? Adaptive test improves cost of quality, throughput, uh, engineering efficiency, and that's the reasons that we're looking at adaptive test. Did you, in the past, did you have to control all this data? Um, and do you still, or is it now moving somewhere else? The data was usually stored either on the tester or offloaded in a data file to some server far away. Now we're streaming data in real time to enable real time decisions. As Steve said, uh, you're also working now with what's going on in the cloud or on premises data centers in addition to at the edge. Now you have more data in more places. How do you manage that? Well, you can imagine how much infrastructure is required to collect and send this data, combine it, build a model, and send it back. So we work with PDF solutions to consume data and then to send data back as a data consumer to the tester to respond with those models. Does it vary depending upon the application that you're using it for? So you think about a, a smartphone, for example, versus a, a chip that might go into a server. Is it the same process? The infrastructure process, the underlying process that we provide is the same. It's the models and the application and the data streams and data flows that may change, but the infrastructure is the same. And as you get into more heterogeneous designs with chiplets and things like that, that becomes even more complicated, right? Yeah, a lot more data from a lot more sources that get combined into a model. And so we want to have an open platform that enables all those different data sources to be driven back into the tester decisions. What happens when you move data from the tester to the edge? Moving data from the tester to the edge is secure. We use a zero trust model. So the data that's flowing back and forth between the edge and the tester can't be modified or it can't be stolen and it's genuine data coming off the tester if the Teradyne stands behind it. The edge continues to be a secure environment for any model to run. Does that allow you to monitor what's going on in the testing from multiple different places too? Teradyne doesn't monitor any of the data. It's so secure we don't know what the customers are doing with that data back and forth. You know, going back a step here, why is moving agents off the tester and onto the edge important? When you're running the tester in production, any other processes running on the tester can have some sort of impact that may require requalification or some performance issue. So any other third-party software, as we call it, that can get off of the tester and away from a critical process is valuable both for the customer and for the vendors providing third-party software. So putting this together, how do you scale this? So this model is one tester into one Ultra Edge. But in reality, a test floor has many, many testers and the material flows between testers, between insertions. So the on-prem and cloud solution, Teradyne works with PDF solutions to help enable that for our customers. That is exactly right, Eli. And in fact, it scales a lot bigger than this because for any particular customer, you have multiple sites across different geographies with uh, many testers in each site. So now uh, we need to create a uniform solution across different test sites, a solution that also integrates at the enterprise level with all the different other steps in the manufacturing process. And this is just one piece, as you mentioned, of all the different processes that are going on here. You've got metrology, you've got inspection, and you've got, particularly as you get into advanced packaging, you've got uh, these things at different steps before you close up as you start adding layers, as you start uh, adding different components, chiplets into there. How does all that data go together? That's an excellent question. In fact, when you think about a whole solution um, for chiplets, every chip will go through its entire semiconductor manufacturing supply chain, starting from the foundry and ending up with the wafer sort and the final test and system level test. And so for each chip, there's going to be all this 
pieces of data and models that are associated with, uh, with that chip. And then at a package level or at the system level, you need to put all of the data together. And that's where the, the real challenge comes in. Integrating all that data together, customers can build their models, Terran can build models, PDF Solutions can build models, and those models drive back into the test flow for adaptive tests, real-time decisions. So are you now bringing together different skill sets than you did in the past from different companies? Yes, we're seeing a lot more data science, computer software, a lot of um, across the insertion, the entire semiconductor ecosphere are now starting to integrate and collaborate together. And the nature is that the more data you have, the more paths you find to make this data useful. And this is more than just PDF solutions and Teradyne coming together, right? This is the whole industry that needs to do this. Yeah, you're right. You don't have to do this alone, and you probably can't do it alone. You have to collaborate with your customer. You have to collaborate with your vendors. And we're seeing a lot of integration with existing companies, new companies, and really getting into sharing data and really breaking down those silos and boundaries that have always been in there in the past so we can collaborate together to have a more effective solution. And we see the same thing on our end, uh, that there are standards that have been deployed in the industry for equipment connectivity, for data alignment and handling security, and we have to follow all those standards and we have to stay ahead of the curve. Steve Zanuck and Eli Roth, thanks for a great explanation. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome.